The Great Commission does not compel us to evangelize geopolitical regions, but rather ethnic groups. Worldwide, there are still some 6,000 unreached ethnic groups that we know of. Welcome back to Understanding the Great Commission. Today we're going to look about the subject of the Great Commission is about reaching nations and not countries. Now I want you to listen very carefully because this could change your entire way of looking at the world and certainly about looking at missions. When I was a young boy, we would hear stories in church about the Cherokee Nation, the Apache Nation, and so forth. I thought that the words nation and country were always synonymous but I was wrong. Let me explain to you why I was wrong. I recently went to the country of Pakistan. So I wanna talk about Pakistan as an example. A country is a geographical, political area with a government, a monetary system, a flag, unique laws, etc. It's a unified territory with established borders. For instance, here we have the country of Pakistan. A nation, on the other hand, is a unique people group with both a common DNA and culture, which though similar, stand out as distinct from every other people group on the planet. Shortly after World War II, theologians rushed to announce that the Great Commission had finally been fulfilled. They reasoned that Christian soldiers had been, by war's end, on most every country of the world, leaving a witness behind them as they traveled. Then some began to realize that their understanding of the verse was incorrect. The Great Commission does not compel us to evangelize geopolitical regions, but rather ethnic groups. The job was not complete then or now, as worldwide there are still some 6,000 unreached ethnic groups that we know of. Here we have another graphic of the same country, Pakistan. We think of it as being one nation or one people, but in reality, it's made up of 70 different ethnic groups or ethnos as we call them in scripture. For example, the Baluch people live here in this area, which borders uh, Afghanistan. The Sindhi live here in this area, which borders India. And the Punjabi live in this area, which also borders India and China but we have a group of 70 different people groups. Sometimes you'll find a tribe of people living here, but they also live here in India. So their territory covers two countries, but yet they are one nation. So as we see in the country of Pakistan and in every country around the world, you have a country which is made up of different nations or ethnic groups. In the Bible, the word nation is the word ethnos, the Greek word, of course, from which we get the word E-T-H-N-I-C, or ethnic, or more commonly referred to as an ethnic group. It all comes from that word nation. So in the Great Commission, when we're told to go into every nation, God is literally telling us to go into every ethnic group and preach the gospel. For example, let's take the Scots. We all know where they live. We all know about William Wallace and so forth. This is a graphic of the country of Scotland. If you look in the Bible, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, you read about a choir in heaven that's singing to the glory of God. And in that choir, it says it's made up of not just the countries, not just the nations, but also the clans or the separate races within a clan. In Scotland, we think of them as one country, and they are. But they're made up really of many different nations that have now united as one country. Among them, you have the McAllisters, and we've all had somebody named, I had a fifth grade teacher named McAllister. We had the McLeods. Uh, I rented a house from a lady named McLeod in New Rochelle when I was starting a church there. But my favorite clan of all is, of course, the McDonald's, especially the Quarter Pounder McDonald's. I really like them a lot. Now, what I'm trying to say is that the one country of Scotland is made up of many nations, and among those nations are these various clans. So when the Great Commission tells us to go into all the world to preach the gospel to all the people, to all the nations that are there. It's literally Christ telling us to reach everybody in an area, not just, you know, we as missionaries sometimes have the tendency of saying, well, we've got one missionary in uh, Tanzania. 
So we're reaching Tanzania for Christ. No, that's one man reaching one small group of people for Christ. If we're going to reach all of Tanzania, then we need to send preachers to every single tribal group in Tanzania. Eventually, the Cherokees of the eastern United States who live in North Carolina, Tennessee, South Carolina, that area, were moved to Indian Territory, which is now called Oklahoma. The Apaches were moved from there to Oklahoma, down to Mexico, and also all the way over to Florida. Now, here's the important thing to realize. No matter where they lived, the Cherokees were still Cherokee, and the Apaches were still Apache. You can change your country, or you can assimilate into a different culture. That's what immigration is all about. But you cannot change your DNA, and that is what the Great Commission is all about. Do you know which ethnos make up your family? Has your ethnos as a whole been exposed to the gospel? Do other members of your ethnos live nearby? How can you influence them for Christ? We hope you've enjoyed this episode in our Understanding the Great Commission series. If you'd like a copy of the book, it's available in paperback, audiobook, and digital download. Just click the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.